your your results, yours and Kevin, you know, firstly, from, before I ask you to wonder this question, from my side, they always say two people can't train one racehorse. How does how do you get it right? I mean, uh, you, I mean, or do you get it right? Can, can two people train one race? Well, Warren, we live together, we work together, we do everything together. So we must get something right, or I get something right. <laughs> um, what do they say? You're <laughs> always right. You're always Mrs. Right. Well, uh, we always laugh because John Jones bought me a, a car sticker that said, "When I fo- when I married Mr. Right, I didn't know his first name was always." <laughs> Welcome to another edition of In the Box Seat. I'm flying solo today as far as presenting goes. So from myself, Warren Inferno, we welcome you and we greet you from the glorious Sommerfeld Clubhouse. Lovely to have a very special friend and colleague and guest on the show today, trainer Alison Wright, who's proudly sponsored by Hollywood. Alison, good morning and how are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me, Warren. See, the moment we start talking, the siren <laughs> goes. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely beware. But um, a glorious day out here. And uh, this is your second home, Summerfeld Training Center. Of course, you know, you spend a lot of time here with the horses. It's just a wonderful environment, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lovely morning today. Nice to have the sun out. We uh, had a downpour on uh, Tuesday night. So, yeah, very happy to uh, see the sun. Let's talk about the rain because, you know, I was criticized a, a couple of years ago because I said that we've had rain and, you know, it, it was aggravating us. And we all understand that we need the rain. We love the rain and, and it makes the grass grow. It waters our plants and we needed to fill the dams. We respect and we love the water and the rain. But too much rain, explain from a training perspective, you know, the, the huge negative effects that it can have on training racehorses. Yeah, well, and the rain drives me crazy. As much as we need it, it's, uh, it's not helpful when it comes to training the horses. Um, you know, we do have the, the poly track, but there's only so many times we like to work on the poly, poly track. So you land up sort of missing work in that. Um, when we moved here in 2003 um, with Nolene Peach, um, it rained and rained and rained, and everyone told us that it was abnormal. Well, for the last, I don't know how, 18 <laughs> years that is. It's remained um, abnormal. It's remained <laughs> abnormal. So, yeah, every year this time, this is what we expect. Yeah, okay. So, I just wanted to make that point uh, clear <laughs> to the public that, you know, too much rain affects the uh, the training of racehorses. That's why the trainers and, and jockeys will moan about too much rain. But we know that we need the rain, and we love the rain, and we certainly respect the water. Let's talk about... How it all started for you. My stock standard question. Alison Wright, take it right back to when you were a kid, which was just the other day. Uh, how did it all start for you, horse racing? Uh, Warren, um, my mom um, and her sister were in show jumping. And uh, my mom then started uh, working for Benny Lobel and a couple of guys in Zim as assistant. And eventually took out her own uh, license. So from little, there were horses. Um, my first pony I got at eight, um, so it's always been around. Um, and uh, she then stopped training for a bit, and and we um, then took out, she, um, you know, a, a yard in Zim when it was sort of floundering a bit. And um, Kevin and I ran the yard. My mom was involved, and um, uh, yeah. So the, and then we moved here in 2003. How did you meet Kevin? Obviously, through racing in Borodale. Well, my mom was training at the time. I was riding work. Um, I was actually dating another jockey and uh, then landed up with uh, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Grumps, as we love to call him, yeah. affectionately. Good yeah. man, good friend, wonderful horseman. And uh, he would never take offense at his nickname being Grumps. But uh, he, he's just a, a wonderful companion, a wonderful partner of yours and a husband and great father and great horseman and he's lovely Kevin. Yeah indeed I mean we've we've been dating since I was 16 so okay. it's uh, been a lifetime just about <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's gone well. Let's actually now that we're talking about Kevin and I, I always jump around a bit and, and that's all right we get through all the questions he was obviously riding in Borrowdale and at, at, at Zim and, and firing and also and then when you moved here he actually rode here for a while and had a bit of an unfortunate accident. Yeah, Warren, uh, Kevin tried uh, to get into the academy from a young age and they turned him down, said he was too big. 
eventually he started when he was um, 19 he he managed to get in taking um, a very good friend of well, became a very good close friend Martin Melosi um, who was I think the first sort of um, uh, jockey of color to go into the academy and um, that's how he started you know he he was 19 at the time so it wasn't um, the normal age and um, he uh, he was champion apprentice champion jockey as well for I think he, he was champion jockey there for nine years he rode in Mauritius successfully he then um, went to Singapore for a stint with Michael Clements we were there for a year rode in Australia for a bit had a winner there and then realized that he didn't have the right documentation and quickly came home so um, that was unfortunate because uh, I think it would have been a different path for us had he done done it correctly but um, yeah and then uh, we moved here in uh, 2003 and in the November he had just ridden a winner went to the start and uh, got kicked and, and and that was amazing just how quickly it can change you know yeah Warren it was actually amazing because it was a, I always remember clearly there was this gray horse and uh, was saddling him he was an absolute savage next to us and uh, when I went into the parade ring, he was riding one for Noli, and I nearly said to Kevin, you know, careful of that gray, and I thought, well, don't be silly. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, that's the horse that's that, the, that that's kicked the naughty, him. Naughty yeah, chap and that in a flash, that was the end of his career. He's now adapted to his, you know, training horses. I don't know whether he, as you say, maybe he, you know, he, training and riding are different, but he's adapted and he's firing. You and him will make a phenomenal team. Yeah, well, Warren, he's he's always been a great horseman. You know, he worked in the yards for Ginger Halfpenny before he was an assistant uh, for Paul Matchett as well. So he, he, he grew up riding. His yeah. mom and dad did trotting um, okay. and he did show jumping. So he, he's always had horses in his blood as well. And like I say, he, he's a horseman. And uh, I think that's made the transition easier. He did be a stop, uh, was a stop for a okay. year and a bit, but they wanted him to go uh, to Joburg. And uh, he was there for a couple of months and um, didn't enjoy living there. So okay. that's when we decided to take a, do a yard here. Yeah. Sorry, there's a couple of muchies yeah. flying around there <laughs> do the damp, the morning <laughs> dew and the damp. It's bringing a few of those muchies, yeah. but... Uh, it's not you're not doing that because I haven't <laughs> yeah, put my deodorant yeah. on this morning. It's because of yeah. the muchies. But okay, so yeah, phenomenal horseman Kevin, and 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 we don't want to reflect and go on about the negative and his accident. But the point I'm making is that he's adapted so well, and 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 he's really uh, safe to say he's loving what he's doing now. Maybe in the beginning he thought, well, maybe this is not for me, but you know he wants to ride, of course. But he's adapted so well. You know, Warren, I think if it had, um, it was always sort of in the back of his mind I think when he was finished riding he yes. wasn't expecting to to, to so finish quickly, so yeah, at yeah, such yeah. a young age um, I think the hard part was that we had only just moved here we didn't know people and uh, the decision you know when when Nolene closed her yard we we didn't have the backing to to take it over um, you know at that time all the Zim owners were under pressure and uh, they couldn't afford to keep the horses and that so we didn't really know the people here I think if Kevin had ridden and met a few people we would have yes. would have taken over sure, straight away sure. but um yeah so like i say he he's a horseman he can see a horse at a sale and see it three years later and know which horse yeah, it is so okay. um yeah it's it's in his blood and i think that was always destined to be you mentioned a, a, a special lady a special lady to 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 most and, and certainly to you and kevin and to me as well because when you know i was in the days of doing jockeys managing jockeys and doing their rides and things um i also got to know nolene very well and and uh, christopher and what a wonderful woman uh, and a wonderful horsewoman nolene peach yeah both of them christo uh, uh, loves his breeding and in fact i believe he's got a couple more mares now and uh you know, I, I actually worked for, for Christo um, on the stud farm for, for two or three years um, before we left to go to Singapore. So they are um, a very special family. We've learned a lot from them. And uh, Kevin rode very successfully, successfully for her. <laughs> Let's go back to, to the, the racing at Borrowdale. I mean, I've had the privilege, and I'm sure there's many viewers that have had the privilege too. And if you haven't, try and get there. I know it's not easy, like just going to Hollywood Bed Scottsville up the road. It's a bit of a trek to get to, to Zim, but 
the racing experience and the racing surface. And I'm not for one second saying there's anything wrong with our racing surfaces. We, we've got fantastic racing surfaces. But that, that turf at Borodale is unbelievable. And yeah. the vibe and the party afterwards yeah. is even better. Yeah, it's, it's always been um, a friendly sort of atmosphere. You know, you go racing afterwards, everyone's together. I was quite shocked when we first came here and you go racing and you go home. You know, it was very different to Borodale. Um, the course is world class. I mean, you speak to Kay Shea, Anthony Delpesh, Anton Market, all those guys that have ridden there, they, they say it's an absolutely amazing course. And I was actually there in September and went and walked on the course. And to think that that beautiful course is there and, you know, they've got five or six runners, it's yeah. you could fit 30 horses on yeah, the track. And, but uh, but you've got to take your hat off to them, Al. They, they've, they've fighting on and they're carrying on and they, they, they're just, but it's like all of us, sick for the game. They just they, I want to see, and, and, and yeah, although they're small fields, but I still watch most of the racing. I know, Warren, it's, it's incredible. Um, you know, I think it's a couple of passionate guys behind it that have kept it going. And uh, I just hope that they can push through and, and, and it can survive, you know. Um, hats off to everybody there. Jeez, it's amazing. What was it like? You said you were there in, se in November, just September. Just September. Yeah, and and what's it like life in Zim at the moment? I mean, your mom's still there? Well, yeah, my whole family are still there. Um, we literally arrived um, in Arari for a day, saw a whole lot of mates and uh, left for Kariba the next day. And I tell you, Kariba trip on a houseboat is... You can't beat it. Yeah, that's still on my bucket list. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, beautiful Zimbabwe. There's no doubt about that. Let's talk about your association with Hollywood Bets because they sponsor y y you and a whole lot of trainers and they do so much for racing. But it's not a sponsorship. It's, it's a family relationship. You and the heifers, elaborate on that. Uh, Warren, obviously, Owen is a ex Zimbo and um, Kevin um, knew him through the racing more than, than sort of I did before moving here. Um, uh, Kevin was always sort of in contact with him and then uh, we he always had one or two horses and it's just grown from there so um, very grateful for their sponsorship you know it's like you say it's not just a sponsorship we we included as a team and um, you know it's a huge huge company and and team effort that goes behind everything yeah they certainly when they do it uh, you know they do it properly there's no doubt about that and I've had the privilege of of you know, you say you're part of the working team, and I've had that privilege too. And they, they, they don't wait. They don't. It's not to be done next week no. or next month. It's you do it now and yeah. you do it properly. Exactly. And they pull it off and time and time again. Yeah, I know that's it's an incredible brand. I mean, you just see what they've done in sponsorship here and overseas now. So, um, yeah, well done to them, and uh, yeah, I'll take a page out of their book. That's for sure. Uh, have you ever seen Owen in short in, in long pants? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, th I think that's his biggest uh, hate is probably long pants. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and, and he's got it right because, you know, with the COVID, with COVID and not having gone into the office fairly, you know, every day, you know, <laughs> and you try and sort of work f semi remotely, and obviously when you go into the office, you go in with your longs. But I must say, uh, you know, a lot of people that I've spoken to, the males and females that uh, are quite enjoying the the short pants so you know it's it's comfortable and it's cool especially in the heat we have here in Durban yeah look, Warren I think uh, the other day I went to a mate's place she works from home and and the husband also is obviously through COVID is more at home now than in the office and he came downstairs with a long shirt and pants because he was in a meeting or <laughs> short pants yeah. so yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay <coughs> let's um talk about Tawanda asked a sp pertinent question and he's sitting behind the scenes there enjoying a wonderful breakfast watching us here we've got a cold drink but no breakfast but we'll have that in a moment your, your results yours and Kevin you know firstly from before I ask you Tawanda's question from my side they always say two people can't train one racehorse how does how do you get it right? I mean, uh, you, I mean, or do you get it right? Can, can two people train one race? Well, Warren, we live together, we work together, we do everything together. So we must get something right, or I get something right. <laughs> um, what do they say? You're <laughs> always right. You're always Mrs. Right. Well, we always laugh because John Jones bought me a, a car sticker that said, "When I fo when I married Mr. Right, I didn't know his first name was always." <laughs> so we often have a joke about that, but. No, Warren, I think um, you certainly can't both be training one horse. And uh, it's, um, you know, Kevin's in charge of that side mainly. We obviously, we share opinions and uh, discuss, but um, there's certainly no good in both of you having a different opinion yes, and yes. Um, fighting over it. So 
we work it out and I'm not a confrontational <laughs> sort of person so I think that helps and uh, no it works well excellent any particular reason I suppose you know you see the trading partnerships you know any particular reason why you haven't registered it as as Kevin and Allison I mean when we see you guys and when we talk on TV it's trained by Allison and Kevin and but just just for paperwork I mean it's in your name or, yeah. or just I don't know it's just the just way we started, started off, off. Yeah, okay so, so we haven't really no real reason really yeah, yeah. yeah. I, keep, I often say to him we should change it but uh, yeah well as I yeah. said you know everyone knows you as the yeah, team exactly. but okay and and the question Tawanda was asking is, is what philosophy uh, or what formula do you have for training racehorses? Because whatever you're doing, you're obviously doing right because you're, you're having winners. And, and yes, like all stables, you have quiet patches, good patches and bad days and good days. But generally, you're in the winner's enclosure. What, what philosophy do you work off? What, what formula do you work off? You know, Warren, I think our biggest thing is, is making sure the horses are happy. They've got uh, knee-deep bedding all the time. It's our biggest, um, you know, thing that they can have bedding, enough bedding, dry bedding to to sleep on and, and rest, in, you know, after work. Um, they've got the best quality lucerne and uh, hay at lib and, um, you know, obviously the best feed and, and enough of it. Um, we also very strict that the grooms are nice to them and obviously, you know, you don't want that and, and I'm sure that applies to everybody and and we have you know great staff and uh, yeah I, I think also you know you don't um, we don't like you, I think you've got to look at the horse and, and it sort of tells you what it's yeah, needing yeah. And, and that but uh, happy horse you know but well they say also in the humans I mean it's a happy wife happy life <laughs> so happy horse happy race happy yes, win you know yes. and, and so it goes you know that is a good philosophy and, and, and the results are certainly speaking for themselves um, we've got to get a camera on to you at the races one day. I've got to have to speak to Tawanda because, <laughs> and I know he's not listening, but his team are listening. Uh, we've got to get a camera on to you one day when you have a runner that's got a chance, but it's, it's hard to predict, you know, when horses are going to win. There's no such thing as a certainty. We all know that. But Kevin's very reserved when watching a race and doesn't move much. I, I love watching people, how they get horses home, you know, and, and, but you, like me are the are the complete opposite we uh, and it's not about me it's about us and it's about you but you really can get get behind <laughs> your horses and bellow them home i know warren it drives kevin crazy he often says that i, I shout too too soon and then they get beat but <laughs> it's just I, I did that when he was riding and yes. uh, so shouted him home and uh, it's just carried through now yeah. so it's just but what it, i do and as much as i try not to i still <laughs> do it <laughs> but uh, and it's not as i see there's so many people that are I've watched it at races that love to shout them home. And that's part of the fun. I mean, and you, you, it's like going to, I, I explain it to people and they say, well, why do you shout? What do you get excited about? And I say, well, when you go to the rugby stadium, you know, and, and you watch one of your kids <laughs> running down the, I don't know too much about rugby, but running down the field to go and score a try, you, you shout, know, you shout <laughs> go boy or go girl or go, go, go. And, you know, and they try and they get celebrated. It's the same thing. Surely it's the same thing. It is, Warren. I think, uh, uh, I also I watched uh, Ashley Fortune uh, in the Durban season last year. And wasn't that I, brilliant? <laughs> I felt that I wasn't uh, too bad off. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't her shouting brilliant? Yeah, that shame, yeah. but it was. A, and I remember. And Ash, if you're watching this, we <laughs> loved that moment. It was a very special moment because I think their owner, Mr. Kohler, had just passed yes, away. Yeah. I think it was the same day or yes. the night before Mr. Kohler had passed, yeah. and and that that uh, Bard of Avon won yeah. the feature exactly. the next day. That's I mean, it, how exactly. can you not shout? Yeah, it's exactly. Such emotion going yeah, through. So. so I know because you, I also you also like to roll your winning form up, <laughs> and then whoever's standing next to you, which has been me sometimes, and you just start bashing the person next All to you. My leg, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up, Al. We love the passion and we love the atmosphere. Um, yeah, I always say the day I stop shouting horses home is the day I give it up. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to talk about a very special horse called Kochka. Your first group one, is that right? In in yes. in, in, in South, in South Africa. Africa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about him. What a horse. Yeah, Warren, he was a, a very special horse. Um, Kevin and John went to a sale. Um, I think it was a, um, the Cape 2 sale and um, bought him. And he had a, he's got a beautiful pedigree. He didn't have the best front legs, and I think that's why they got him um, relatively cheaply considering his, his pedigree. And um, he came into the yard, this big, actually didn't look athletic to me, and... Um, just uh, one day cantered on the track and Kevin said, my God, this horse is, is good. 
you know, he, the horse next to him was going flat out and he was just in a canter. And uh, yeah, he um, unfortunately um, landed up uh, hurting his tendon and um, went for a rest and then came back and, and the other one started to go. So he won a race after that, but then um, we had to retire him and I took him as a show jumper. He's, I'm glad you mentioned that because life after racing, uh, often people think, well, you know, we don't really care about our animals after racing, and we so do. And that's the message that also, again, Hollywood are trying to put out with their life after racing program because we certainly do our very best to make sure they have happy homes and happy afterlives. And Kotchka's loving life. No, absolutely. So um, I took him, schooled him, and we went to a couple of shows. Um, he's out of an Eliador mare, which is meant to jump and... Uh, Unfortunately, he, he, don't he jump. got no. Well, he, he got <laughs> he, he would always have four faults or eight faults and drove me crazy. So um, he then um, went um, for uh, just as a hack, and that didn't work out. So he came back to us and uh, became the lead pony. Um, used him through the gates and uh, all that sort of thing. And then um, Kevin just said, "Listen, the you know the main horse that we had him for retired, and uh, he just felt sorry for him being." at the yard and um, we managed to find him a very good home and he's now going to do a bit of low level competing and that okay. he's in Pretoria um, and thanks to Carrie Radford that does an excellent job in rehoming these horses, finding them homes and uh, often does it for, for no reward, reward you know, she yeah. just is passionate about finding these horses homes and when you see the, the, the posts on Facebook about horses that aren't looked after, you know, every I think single trainer does their best to m ensure that the horses go to good homes. Absolutely, absolutely. I tell you, we, uh, uh, and it's amazing, and uh, we've just rehomed one now, our, our good old fella, Cold Hard Cash, and we were adamant that, that our partners and I were adamant that he had to go to, to a place, and, and Kelvin Habib's wife, um, her name escapes me, Chandra, I think her name is, was very also like Carrie does here, they do up in Joburg. Yes. Anyway, we shipped him up to Joburg and we've got in contact with the family who's taken him over. Well, if I can tell you that I wish I was a racer sometimes because he is just being loved and cherished as he always has been, but it's heartwarming to see them after racing just really be loved like yeah, that. Yeah, Warren, there's nothing... I there's nothing better than getting uh, updates from your horses yes. that you've trained. I mean, I had Sonny Bill de Toy, who um, unfortunately hurt his tendon, and he's found the most awesome home as a hack, low-level sort of riding, and that. And the lady always sends me um, updates, and you know, a whole lot of horses that we've had, and, and yes. uh, yeah, there's it's, it's just really it is, heartwarming. It is heartwarming. It certainly is. You've not only Kotchka, you've also had some, some good horses, some multiple, you know, it's hard to find group one winners and group one horses, but the yard's always been consistent and winners have always flown and uh, flowed and so maybe touch on one or two other horses that I've forgotten about. Yeah, oh, Warren, it's like you say, it's, it's, it's not easy to, to win a, gr a group one race or, or get a champion. You know, you, you think of those people that have been in racing for years and never, ha never had a grade one winner. So it's not easy. Sure. And, uh, you know, obviously Kochka stands out. Um, unfortunately, that uh, filly of uh, Leshes that won the grade three in Joburg um, last year hurt her tendon after the race. So I think she was special. Everything that she beat has come out and won the graded races. And uh, she's on the farm and hoping that she can recover. But, you know, it's all time. And uh, tendons are, are not the best injury. It's, it's not easy for them to come back after that. Help me, please, because there's a horse now that you've got in your care that seems to be a very progressive. I, I can't remember names. I'm shocking. But uh, what's your name again, Mary? Uh, Ma <laughs> Matilda? Alison? Uh, 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 <laughs> Michael calls me. What, is, what does Michael call you? Belinda. Uh, Belinda, okay. Um, now it won the other day. Progressive type, Hollywood's horse. Uh, Champompo Champizi. That's the one. Yes. Going about it the right way and, and looks progressive. Looks yeah, well exciting. He's, he's, a, he's a beautiful horse. Um, so, yeah, you, you hope that he can he can go on with it. Sure, um, sure. You know, he's done nothing wrong so far. Um, we've realized that he doesn't uh, like the poly. His runs on there have, have been disappointing. So, yeah, he'll go for the King's Cup. Um, you know, we've had Flitcherty by far. She was a, a, a lovely filly to train. She's... Uh, Retired at six or seven and is now in foal. Okay. And uh, yeah, so they're not easy to find the, the good ones, but um, you keep trying. I absolutely. think that's what you, you live for. Yeah, absolutely. 
let's touch on your family uh, as we enter the home straight because I know that you, you've got a huge schedule ahead of you for today and so have I, but that's not an excuse. We could sit here and talk for hours, but uh, you've got people waiting for you at the stables. Your family, are they all involved in... I talk about your, your, we're going to talk about Gary just now, your son, but your, your mom and your brothers and sisters, and are they all involved in racing? Um, Warren, no, um, my mom obviously trained. There's my first boss, Mr. Wenzel. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, my mom obviously was, rode and trained, and uh, my dad was um, more so involved the second or third time she trained, like recently. You know, he was uh, doing the, the books and, and loved the racing, you know, and he was involved at the club and everything. But um, my mom, um, unfortunately, uh, had a stroke a couple of years ago, and... Uh, lost her sight and it just became too difficult for her you know she sure. wanted to do everything properly she wanted the tracks a certain way and and it just became an aggravation more than anything you know and uh, she decided to to call it quits and um, my brother rode as a as a kid um, he would just go to the shows I would work the ponies and he would <laughs> arrive at the show my sister, who's ten years younger than me, she was never involved with the horses. Okay. Um, but would be would be interested in the results and. Oh yeah, so she followed and and she um she owned shares in the horses when mom was training okay. and went racing and that, but never rode, never never got involved that on that That's side. Right. But um, they still got a share, and I think a little varfali, but um, you know they they're not really um involved anymore now okay. that mom's um, retired. Okay, okay. Let's talk about Gary now, your son, who's. You just got the one son, one one child, you and Kev, uh, uh, Gary. Tell us about Gary because he's obviously supports you guys, but he's not too keen on horses. No, so Gary <laughs> is, uh, I think, the least uh, horsey out of everybody. Um, <laughs> he was, uh, I think, two or three when I worked at Rumbavu for Christopher Peach, and um, I was so desperate for him to ride. I had all these little ponies lined up for him and uh, would force him to go and ride in the afternoons and be That's led the around. problem, <laughs> Al. You forced him, you see. <laughs> Kevin kept warning me. And uh, <laughs> so he had a fall, I think, at the riding school or something one day. And he just said, no, he's not doing it anymore. And he was actually a natural. He sat on the horse. You didn't have to tell him how to sit. He was just a natural. So anyway, that was uh, as far as he got. Um, but uh, and uh, he then, you know, he we moved here when he, so shame he he moved around a lot he he started school we then went to singapore they put him in the wrong grade went back to zim realized that he had been in the wrong grade so his poor his junior schooling was uh, just up and down and uh, he landed up at kersney for high school and um yeah he he did so well and um then went to stellenbosch and did a deg uh, engineering degree civil engineering and um He's now been working uh, for a year. Okay. Yeah. Where is he based now, Al? So he he works for um, company Robix. Um, um, thanks to Frank Robinson who, who put us in touch with them. And uh, yeah, so he's been there a year. He's based at the moment in in Amschlange. They work okay. going to start working on the road there. Okay. And. Um, yeah, he's he's done really well. So, so does he live? Is he living in Amstrong? Is he? Or so is he yeah, he's he was in Belita when okay. he was working on the N2 in Belita. There, they've just finished that at the end of last year, and uh, will now move um, to Amstrong. Okay. Oh, so you see him? I, I, so I, thought, I was under the impression the that he was in another province. No, okay, no. So, so, so for so now he's here, which is great. Um, okay. You know, he comes home on the weekends and. Uh, stocks up on the instant meals and stuff <laughs> that we have for him so um yeah no it's okay. it's it's and worked out well he, he, he hasn't found well. he hasn't found a lovely lady yet in his life he has a he has a a, a girlfriend okay. um she is um lives in limpopo though so it's um but she has been up and down but uh yeah nothing okay. oh, fantastic. serious at the moment no bells uh, ringing uh, yet no. eh? oh. i don't want to be a granny just yet <laughs> <laughs> too young uh, before we move on to one or two uh, i call it personal questions but they they're not personal questions uh, i want to just quickly talk to you and i know that you, you've been busy this morning and as i say we've got 100 meters left to go of the podcast the hollywood uh, durban july the hollywood bets durban july the theme was released this morning and show me the honey is is the theme and I think it's brilliant because the, you know, show me the honey, show me the money, honey, the bees. They had the whole teaser lead up to the, the, the announcement with the flowers and the bees. And, of course, the bees, the soccer team overseas. Good thinking. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, it had Kevin and I arguing and discussing what the theme was. Um, 
we knew it was something to do with bees and honey, but yeah. didn't get. And, uh, and of course, bees and honey is the slang for money. <laughs> so there's lots of ways you could look yeah, at it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, brilliant. I'm, I'm can't wait to go and tell Kevin what it actually is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <coughs> now, tell me, you and Kevin, where do you live? We don't need to know exactly yeah. your house number, but I mean, we where, live what in area Hillcrest are you? We live in Hillcrest in Equestrian Estate. Okay. It's, um, it's, uh, we were very lucky to to um, get in there. They were um, actually building a, a small little complex within there, and we managed to get a three-bedroomed house, and uh, it's brilliant. Um, um, I think uh, I, and I have a stable there, and I have a horse. I love taking horses that I like at home uh, in the yard here, and I'll take them when they finish school them, okay. and... Uh, I usually don't have time to get to shows and that, and um, so they usually get sold on once they're ready to go to shows. But uh, it, it's a it's a lovely place, and um, I think that's part of what's made us happy here. Yeah, yeah. And also looking at your social media platforms, um, wildlife. I mean, you got oh, buck yeah. and <laughs> rabbits and all things coming, and that's part of the fun. Buck and, and all that, yeah. Yeah. So they um, release crow releases, um, injured diker and stuff okay. like that in there. So we have uh, bultong and uh, bok bok and um, <laughs> red, and them come for dinner. <laughs> Kevin feeds them every night. They literally see our car driving in, and they're waiting there for, Isn't for that amazing, dinner. Eh? And uh, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, car. What car do you drive? Um, uh, uh, cab and a half, Toyota cab and a half. Yeah. Okay, and uh, pet hates anything that irritates you? What irritates besides the rain that disrupts your training <laughs> yeah, program? Besides the, the rain, is uh, a dog drinking. A dog drinking <laughs> drives me crazy. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, the noise that's okay. okay. <laughs> They're not allowed to drink when I'm standing there. <laughs> You've got to be in it, yeah. not in yeah. earshot. Yeah. Um, what what do you really enjoy? What do you what do you tell us what what, what you really like? Warren, well, my my pastime is is riding. You know, crazy as it seems that I spend uh, all my days here, and then um, so yeah, riding. You know, I have a good um, a circle of friends that okay. that I uh, hack and ride with, and um, yeah. So, so okay, yeah. So that's good Should enough. I, I mean, well, so, I mean, it's that's I can understand that because often you know people. I was t- bumped into Callum Dixon. Uh, who was up from the Cape working for Platner, he's uh, on leave. And I said to him, you're on leave? He said, yes. I said, but you're here working, the horse, working with the horse. He says, well, you can't get rid of it. And it's the same as yeah, all of exactly. us. You know, it's, yeah. it's, We go on holiday, you follow the results. I mean, it's you can't get rid of it. Uh, if I said to you, uh, we're taking you and Kevin out for supper, what do you want to eat? What's your favorite? Um, my favorite meal is uh, sadza and yama. Okay, okay. Pup and play, what I don't know what they call it. Pup and, okay, <laughs> yeah. pup and uh, shisa and yama. Yeah, or, yeah exactly. Pup and, okay, um, okay. Kevin loves uh, steak, but uh, yeah, we, we, we love, uh, that's our once a week sort of. Okay, uh, yeah. fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> and Al, um, as I say to everybody, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, some people don't like to declare that they enjoy a dop. We, our, our family, <laughs> love a gin and tonic, but what's your favorite drink of choice, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Um, it would be a gin and tonic. Okay. Um, in Zim, it was always vodka, but uh, you know, since I've come here, you know, it's a, it's a gin and tonic with the friends. Um, I've got uh, actually a, my best friend here is married to an ex Zimbo who, whose mom rode and he rode, and so they live in the complex. And we okay. often uh, go around there, or well, I go around there for a gin and <laughs> tonic, tonic with them. It's amazing how, you know, I, I think back to my mom and dad's days when a gin and tonic was the simple old gin with a to- normal Indian tonic. Um, you know, and now how it's developed, it's you it's get incredible. the different flavors, you get the different mixes, you get the fruits, and all those wonderful things that go in with it. And and but I think it's because you know it's, it's people have their, their palates have changed and the marketing has have changed. And I mean, even vodkas you talk about, you get <laughs> citrus flavored vodkas, yeah. and it's incredible. So it it's, is incredible yeah, how, the, how the things gin are. Is yeah, I, I watched that thing on uh, Carte Blanche about the gin being made from the elephant tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Told uh, my uh, Lyle, this friend of ours, and uh, he's ordered it for me. So I'm waiting to to have an occasion where he's around and uh, we'll pop that. Pop that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> talking about that, have you seen, I'd love to know, and I need to Google it and find out. Have you seen uh, the ca- cotton candy flavored grapes and the butterscotch grapes have you not seen those no, yet no, no. next time you go shopping oh, at Woolies go and have a look at the <laughs> cotton candy grapes and the butterscotch grapes and tell me that they're not uh, I've become addicted to them I eat a, a carton of grapes uh, I, a don't, day. I better not go into yeah. them um, do you have a sweet tooth I do 
Okay, so you like it, but okay, you do. And when is your birthday, Al? It's on the 8th of June. Okay, now, when's your husband's birthday? 23rd of June. Okay, so both in June, yeah. fantastic. Before we wrap up, there's two runners for Sunday. And we've had a wonderful conversation and, and it's just wonderful to, 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 to sit around with you and talk and, and learn about you. And as I say to all our guests, we could sit here for three hours, but sadly we haven't got three hours. Scratch this jungle junction, is that right for Sunday? Yeah, so he, he's uh, running on the Monday. We uh -huh. were worried that the Monday race might not stand okay. up. So okay. um, we got Stipe's permission to declare him for okay. both. Yeah. Uh, can you can Yisa and Lela, what are you expecting come Sunday? So he's uh, got gelded. He's going to need the run. Okay. Yeah. Winter Waves doing well. Yeah, he's a uh, horse that's um, given us grey hairs. Uh, you know, he he's always finds something to... to um, stop him from winning but uh, yeah he's won two out of two and uh, he's well it is a it is a competitive field it is a tough field so we'll be pleased if he can run into the money and uh, for monday jungle junction is, is first timer he's a first timer owned by um some zim zim um, friends of ours and uh, yeah he's a he's a lovely looking horse um, i think the thousand might be a bit short for him but um just need to get him up and running I, I looked at that spotted pig stud. Who's that potted, spotted pig stud? So it's Kevin and I own a, I own a Fallon. Fallon. Uh, not um, Kieran Fallon, eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. and, and is that, are they based in uh, spotted so pig in Yes, Zimmer? but their, their mares are um, with Jill Fox. In okay, yeah, at the fort. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Al, all that's left for me is, as always, to wish you well. And you and Kevin and, and Gary and your whole team and... You know, you're always receptive to the media. You come, I know that you know, I harass you sometimes for comments, but you, you, you always do. And just thanks for all that you do and for always screaming home the horses and, and just being the friendly, wonderful, right team that you guys are. And we wish you all the very best. Thanks. As I said, I'd love to sit and talk more, but you're busy, I know, and, and we'll get time to talk again, no doubt. Thanks, Warren. Thanks for having me. Lovely. That's Alison Wright, part of the, as you said, Alison tells Kevin all the time she's always right. <laughs> she's never wrong. <laughs> and she's 100% right. That's a wrap from us. It's been a wonderful conversation. A little short than normal, although we have been going for an hour. Um, but we could sit and talk to Alison for a lot longer. But she's under big pressure, and so am I. So all that's left for us is to wish you all the very best. Be safe. Love one another. Punt well. And as always, we'll see you in the number one box. Thank <laughs> you.